The National Broadcasting Company delays the start of this program to bring you a special bulletin. From the NBC newsroom in New York, Henry L. Stimson, former Secretary of State and Secretary of War, is dead at the age of 83. Stimson died at his home in Cold Spring Harbor, Long Island. Keep tuned to your NBC station for the later news. The National Broadcasting Company presents Counter Spy. Washington calling David Harding, Counter Spy. Washington calling David Harding, Counter Spy. Harding, Counter Spy. Calling Washington. United States counter spies, especially appointed to investigate and combat the enemies of our country, both at home and abroad. These counter spy reports to the American people are brought to you each Friday night. Tonight, Case of the Curious Conspiracy. Good evening, Mr. Harding. Good evening, Conway. Through this door, Chief. Oh, thank you. Hello, Peter. Evening, Chief. I'll get started. Ladies and gentlemen, Lecture 7 in Counter-Spy Refresher Course on Modus Operandi. Our speaker, Mr. Harding. The case I'm going to tell you about demonstrates one of the most unusual and cunning schemes used by your country's enemies to sabotage our preparedness program. Although the plan has been in successful operation for some time, it was first brought to the Counter-Spy's attention in the case of the Franklin Nylon Company a small but vital subcontract firm, supplying materials to parachute manufacturers. On the afternoon of September the 5th, Charles Franklin, president of the company, was alone in his office dictating to a mechanical recorder. And and that, Mr. Harding, is the entire story. I had no rest since this horrible thing happened. I'm no better than a traitor and a murderer. I do not ask forgiveness. I deserve none. Yes, Mr. Franklin? Will you please come right in, Miss Brewster? Yes, sir. I want you to see that this record is delivered to the local counter-spy field office. Counter-spy? Yes, immediately. That will be all, Miss Brewster. Mr. Franklin, please don't think I'm speaking out of turn, but you haven't been yourself lately, and, well, I've been worried about you. You don't have to worry about me anymore, Miss Brewster. I'll be all right soon. All right. Now, please see that the record is delivered. Yes, sir, I will. Headquarters, Washington, calling Agent Harry Peters, field office, Baltimore. Harding, calling Peters. Peters, go ahead, Mr. Harding. Have Agent Owens take over your assignment in the subversive investigation. I want you back here in Washington. Something special, Chief? Yes, Peters, special and very strange. Mr. Harding, from what I've heard so far of that recorded confession of Mr. Franklin's, I don't find anything so strange about it or special. Yes, that's right, Peter. So far, it runs along the usual course. A businessman falls in with a scheme to get extra allotments of critically short materials. 
So after a while, this larceny in Franklin's heart goes to the conscience in his head and he takes his life. Mm -hmm. The usual pattern. But now we'll get to the unusual. The rest of the record. Then, Mr. Harding, on the afternoon of September 2nd, I went to Albert Langdale's apartment to discuss the first shipment of raw nylon to my plant. Langdale's sister Marion was not present this time. We had been talking only a few minutes when the rear door opened suddenly and a man with a gun came in and identified himself as one of your counter-spy agents. What? The agent was about to put us under arrest when Langdale grabbed his gun. A struggle ensued, the gun went off, and your agent was killed. Killed? Peters, there's more. Langdale told me to leave and said he would dispose of the body. Later that evening, Langdale came to my home. In payment for the risk he took, he demanded that I turn over to him a controlling share of my stock in the company. I had no choice. I did as he ordered. And that, Mr. Harding, is the entire story. I... I've had no rest since this horrible thing happened. I'm no better than a traitor and a murderer. I do not ask forgiveness. I deserve none. Well, Peter? Strange is right. We've no previous record of this case, have we? None at all. Certainly none of our agents has mysteriously disappeared. Hmm. Blackmailed by a phony murder setup. Old as the hill. Yes, and as old as espionage and sabotage. What do you mean, Chief? Well, we're not just dealing with ordinary blackmail. Look at the aspects of this case, Peters. The Franklin Nylon Company supplies material to parachute manufacturers. And the way I see it, this is a scheme planned by foreign agents to sabotage our war industry. You're certainly getting it a big build-up, Chief. Well, I don't think out of proportion to its importance. But I'm sure that Langdale, or whatever his real name is, and his sister Marion have probably worked this scheme on other businessmen. Now, Peters, I want a teletype sent out immediately to all field officers. Got you. To track down any sudden transactions of controlling stock in subcontracting firms. Right. I have an idea that that will eventually lead us to Albert Langdale, his sister Marion, and their latest victim. Yes, sir? I believe there's a reservation at this hotel for me. Uh, My name is Albert Langley. Oh, yes, Mr. Langley. Uh, Please sign here, sir. Miss Langley is down the hall from you, just a few doors. Oh, good. She asked me to notify her as soon as you arrived. I'll call her now, sir. Uh, Thank you, but if you don't mind, I'd rather surprise my sister. Yes, but it... Surprise, sister. Oh, Albert. Albert, darling. Careful, Marion. After all, that's no way for a sister to act, is it? Someone may see us. Let's go inside. (laughs) Now you can afford to be less fraternal. hmm? So I can. Mm -hmm. Now, about our latest prospect. You're not one to linger long over the uh, niceties, are you, Albert? When our mission here in the States is completed, we'll have a great deal of time to devote to our niceties. When will that be? Just as soon as we extend our control into a few more vital fields of American war production. Oh, I I meant to tell you. I read about Charles Franklin committing suicide. I read the same thing. You're not worried about it? Worried, darling? Don't be foolish. I only wish our other clients had taken the same course. Now, to get to the latest prospect. Well, He's a manufacturer of small metal parts for radio and radar equipment. Mm, radio and radar. Mm-hmm. Excellent, Marion. His name is Vincent Scott. Married? Yes. Oh. Unhappily married. Oh. I've brought a new life into his life. Vincent Scott would be amenable to a little larceny. <laughs> I didn't bring you all the way down here for nothing. You've already told Scott about your uh, brother. I told him my brother Albert has excellent connections in the steel and copper industry. Seen a great deal of Scott? Every night for the past two weeks. I'm meeting him downstairs in the dining room at 8. Tonight at 8, hmm? Mm-hmm. Well, then, dear sister, I suggest you call the maitre d' and change that dinner reservation from the two of you to the three of us. <laughs> Langley, I, uh, 
I, uh, I was very surprised when Marion told me you were to have dinner with us here this evening. Well, Mr. Scott, I just stopped by on my way down from Washington. I'm only remaining for a day or two. You don't mind, do you, Vincent? I see Albert so little these days. Mind? Oh, of course not, Marion. Uh, uh, as a matter of fact, uh, Mr. Langley, after what your sister told me about you, I was very anxious to meet you. Really? Well, that is a coincidence. Uh, coincidence? Yes. After my sister told me about you, Mr. Scott... I was very anxious to meet you. Agent Conway, Mason City Counter Spy Field Office to David Harding, Headquarters. Report on war production subcontracting firms. Controlling stock of Rayleigh Electrical Equipment Company, this city, transferred August 2nd to an Albert Langston. Harding to Agent Conway. Continue investigation. Mr. Harding, Agent Farrell just reported from Carryville Field Office. Controlling stock of Carryville Plastic Products transferred September 17th to an Albert Lewis. All right, Peters, wire Farrell. Continue investigation and submit to me daily progress reports. Agent Hudson, Chicago Field Office, to David Harding, Headquarters. Controlling stock of Abbey Glass Fiber Company transferred August 30th to an Albert Lamar. Harding to Agent Hudson. Stand by temporarily for further instructions. Will do, Chief. Well, Peter, what do you think now? Looks like you pegged it right, Chief. The pattern's there, all right. Yeah. An electrical supply outfit in Mason City, a plastics company in Carryville and a glass fiber manufacturer in Chicago. And the last victim, the Franklin Nylon Company. Every outfit a small but vital part of our war production. Yes, and examine the names of the new owners of the controlling stock, Peter. Albert Langdale, Albert Langston, Albert Lewis, Albert Lamar. All one and the same person. No doubt about that at all. But where to locate him now? Or the woman who works with him? Yeah, it's going to be tough, I know, but... We've got one thing in our favor. Like what? Our understanding of the psychology of people like these. They set up a pattern, it works for them, and they stick to it without major variation. Well, Peters, you and I are going to examine that pattern at close range, personally. Question one of the victims, you mean? That's what I mean. Call the field, tell them to get the jet ready for a flight to Chicago. Right. In the meantime, I'll radio Hudson that we're on our way out there to take over operations. Well, Marion, everything is ready for me to take over operations. You had no trouble selling Scott the idea, Albert? I sell him the idea. Don't be ridiculous. Should know by this time I never operate on such a clumsy level. <laughs> you let him sell you the idea. Huh? Of course. I merely mentioned my supposed contacts, my ability to procure certain critical materials for my friends. And naturally, you included any friend of your sister's? A friend of your own. Naturally. Albert, you're wonderful. Am I not? And impossibly conceited. Well, I see no reason to be ashamed of my talent. Oh, you... Oh, you. Come here. Wouldn't you like me to kiss you? You know I would. But not like a brother. Hmm? Oh. Why must you spoil everything but... Hmm... Albert, better let me go. The door. Let it wait. Maybe Scott. Well, it is. Mm, go answer. You're under arrest by the United States counter spy. <gasps> What's the matter, Marion? <laughs> I scare you? Oh, no, not much. <laughs> Max, you fool, you gave me the fright of my life. Hello, Max. Come on in. Hello, Albert. Sorry I'm late. My train was held up. You knew it was Max at the door. Of course. <laughs> I could tell you. Oh, you need a drink, darling. I'll have one, too. Max? A pleasure. And you needn't rush, Marion. Max and I will talk over our business first. All the tricks. All the low-down, dirty, despicable tricks. <laughs> What's eating her? And no sense of humor. Well, Max, you all set to go to work? All set, Albert. Got a nice new set of credentials. When and where? Tomorrow night at 11. 
The Scott Company Warehouse on River Street. You'll be sure to give your usual convincing performance. You don't have to worry about me. When I pop up and say, United States Counter Spies, it'll be in the bag. You are listening to the case of the curious conspiracy on Counter Spy. Later tonight, William Bendix stars as beleaguered Chester A. Riley in the delightful Life of Riley. Mom, Babs, and Junior will be on hand to help Pop out of his many predicaments. And, of course, the friendly undertaker, Digger O'Dell, will offer his usual chilling advice. Another Friday night chime favorite is Bill Stern's Sports Newsreel, with authentic and dramatic stories of the people who make front-page news. Friday night chimes mean laughs later with the Life of Riley and drama with Bill Stern's Sports Newsreel. Now, back to Counter Spy. Yes? You're Robert Abbey of the Abbey Fiberglass Company? Yes, that's right. What, what is it? I'm Agent Peters, United States Counter Spies. Counter Spies? You're wanted for questioning. Please come with me. This time I want the truth, Mr. Abbey. You were forced into turning over the controlling shares in your company to this Albert Lamar. Now, isn't that right? No. No, Mr. Harding. Mr. Abbey, there's no use in holding out. We know just how you were taken over. Now, gentlemen, please. This man, Lamar, is a dangerous enemy agent. Under various names, he has defrauded other American businessmen. Now, in order to trap him, we need your help. There's... There's nothing I can tell you. All right. And we'll tell you something. The reason you turned that stock over to Albert Lamar was because you found yourself an accessory to murder. What? The murder of a counter-spy agent. The agent was killed by Lamar right in front of your eyes. Well, Abby, isn't that the reason? Isn't it? I... I had nothing to do with the murder. Please believe me, gentlemen. I wanted to go to the police so many times and tell the whole story, but I... I, I just didn't have the courage. It would have ruined me. Mr. Abby... That man you saw killed was not a counter-spy. What? As a matter of fact, he wasn't killed at all. Not... But I saw it happen. I, I heard the gun go off. That was all an act. A setup for Lamar to get control of your company. You're not an accessory to murder, Abby. But you are guilty of intent to conspire. Oh, that... That doesn't matter now. As long as I have that terrible thing off my mind. Well, are you ready to help us now? Uh, yes. Yes, Mr. Harding. Any way I possibly can. All right. How did you first become involved with this Lamar? Through his sister, Marion. One day on the street, we bumped into each other accidentally. You can bet that was no accident. Well, Mr. Harding, now we know how the pattern starts. Yes. All right, Abby, I want a full description of both Albert Lamar and his sister, Marion. Then you'll tell us the entire story right from the beginning. <laughs> From David Harding to all counter spy field officers, blue alert. Be on the lookout for the following persons Albert Lamar, alias Albert Langston, alias Albert Langsdale, alias Albert Lewis, and woman posing as his sister, Marion. Description follows Do not apprehend, repeat, do not apprehend these two. As soon as whereabouts are established, notify this headquarters. Now, Scott, you're sure there's no one in this warehouse but you and me? Yes, yes, I, I'm positive. What's uh, taking them so long? Oh, it's not 11 yet. The truck with the metal will be here on time. I, uh, I, I've never done anything like this before. Well, this is the first time for everything, you know. I uh, have a feeling this isn't going to turn out right. I'm sure it'll turn out exactly right. Just as I planned it. Langley. Someone knocked over a case. Be quiet. There's someone in this warehouse. We, we've got to get out before it's too late. Too late now. What? Both of you stand right where you are. What? One move from either of you and I fire. What are you doing here? This is Mr. Scott's warehouse. Yes, I know. I followed you here. You're both under arrest by the United States counter spies. Counter spies? For conspiracy against the government. We've been waiting to catch you, Langley. I told you, Langley... 
I had a feeling all along. All right, you two, let's go. Come on. Could you uh, wait a moment? For what? For this. Let go of that gun. Let go. Not until I get it. Not until... Langley. He's dead. You, you killed him. The gun went off accidentally. I, I didn't mean you, to... You murdered him. Stop it. Yes. Stop talking that way. Yes, you did, yes. You're in this as much as I am. Don't you forget that. Not for a single minute, Scott. What, what, what are we going to do? You're in no condition to do anything. I, I, Get out of here. Go home. I, I'll call you later. Yes, but, but they'll... They'll find out. No I... one will find out anything. I'll get rid of the body. You go home and wait for my call. <laughs> Don't worry. I'll take care of everything. Now hurry. Get out of here. Yes. All right. All right. Come on, Max. Get off. <laughs> <laughs> well, help oh. us. Did I bite the dust good enough for you this Max, night? you were magnificent. Absolutely <laughs> magnificent. <laughs> Thanks. So, um, all you have to do is step in for the wind-up, huh? That's all. Well, I'll, uh, I'll be on my way. I'll be hearing from you. Oh, of course, Max. You'll be hearing from me just as soon as Marion and I set the stage for another one of your counter-spy entrances. Hey, you can't enter this office without knocking first. Who do you think you are? Well... Who do you think I am? Mr. Harding. <laughs> he even had you fooled up, Peter. Dave, what's the idea? Ah, just testing my new makeup. Hey, come on, come on. What's it all about? The gray hair and everything. Yeah, what about this newly acquired paunch of mine, huh? <clears throat> Would you say, Peter, that I'm a typical successful American businessman, huh? Okay, I say you're a typical successful businessman. Now, how about the whys and wherefores? Our agents located the woman in a Texas hotel. She's going under the name of Marion Lawrence this time. What about her partner, Albert? No, no sign of him so far, but I anticipate meeting him soon, personally. Oh, now I get it, the disguise. Mm Mm-hmm. Everything's set up for me in Texas. Peter, you are now looking at Mr. David Harrison, president of the D&H Chemical Company. Come on, let's go. After all, can't keep a lady waiting. That's right, Albert. David Harrison, president of the D&H Chemical Company. You told him about your loving brother's influence in obtaining critical chemicals? Yes. And he's very receptive, I'd say. Then, darling, I'd say it's just about time for me to come to Texas and meet your receptive Mr. Harrison. David. I hope you don't mind my bringing Albert along. Oh, not at all, Mary. Mr. Harrison, my sister has written me so many nice things about you. It's a great pleasure to meet you in person. Well, believe me, Mr. Lawrence, the pleasure is all mine. How'd it go tonight, Mr. Harrison? Fine, fine. I really sold myself to them, Peters, all the way down the line. Good. Then you ready for the wind-up? No, not yet. We're delaying arrest until we're sure of getting the third member of the ring, that phony counter-spy agent, and all their records and the stocks they've swindled. You figure it'll take much longer, Chief? No, not much, Peter. Albert put the bait out on his line tonight. I'll let it wiggle in front of me for another day or so, and then I'll bite it. All set to go to work, Albert. You have everything straight, Max? Sure, it's no different than any of the others. I mean the time and the place. Ten tomorrow night. Harrison's private office over his factory, right? That's right. Here's a drink. Oh, thanks, darling. Max? Thanks, Marion. Well, here's to another one, huh, folks? Let's drink to it. To another one. Well, by the way, Max. Uh, yeah? You were wrong before. Wrong? When you said this was going to be no different than the others. Max, I have the most wonderful feeling that this Harrison deal is going to be the smoothest operation of them all. Hey, what time is it, Lawrence? You don't have to stand near that window watching the delivery yard. The truck with the chemicals will be here on time. You don't have to worry, Harrison. Oh, I'm not worried, no. You're not? No, not a bit. Well, in case you do have any doubts, let me assure you everything will go exactly as planned. I know it will. 
course, you've never done anything like this before. Well, uh, no, not quite. You'll get used to it. And you won't regret meeting me, Harrison. Oh, I know. I'm never going to regret that, Mr. Largo. Hey, nobody'd be ringing me here this time of the night. I didn't tell anybody I'd be here. It uh, may be for me. Yeah, maybe it is. I reckon you better take it then. Hello? Albert. This is Marion. We're in trouble. What? Now listen to me and don't give yourself away. Go ahead. I was in my hotel room. Someone knocked on my door and said he was a counter spy. I got out the back way just before he broke the door in. Where, uh, where are you now? At the railroad station. I'm going to get the package out of the locker. All right, I'll meet you there as soon as possible. You may not be able to get away from it. That won't be difficult. You don't understand. He's not Harrison. What? I had a feeling about it. So I phoned the real Mr. Harrison, and he's at home. At home? The man with you must be a counter spy. Yes. Yes, that must be it. Be careful. Don't worry. I'm sure it can be managed. Something wrong, Lawrence? You look upset. Well, I did have some rather disappointing news. I'm sure everything will work out all right. Stand where you are, both of you. Hey. You're both under arrest by the United States counter spies. Keep your gun aimed right at him, Max. Uh, Don't take it off him. What's this all about? Yeah, I'd like to know, too. It seems, Max, that our Mr. Harrison isn't Mr. Harrison. Isn't that right, Mr. Harrison? I don't know what you're talking about. I'm talking about the fact that you're a counter spy agent. Counter spy? Marion called. She just escaped arrest. What? She's at the railroad station waiting for us. We've got to clear out fast. Yeah, yeah, but what about him? That's right, Albert. What about me? For all we know, this place may be surrounded. I've got bad news for you two. It is. And I've got worse news for you. We're using you to get out. And if we don't make it, you don't live. Nothing doing, Albert. I'm not getting my head blown up. You're doing exactly as I say. Don't you see, you fool? He may be bluffing. What if he isn't? We'll take that chance. You stay right behind him with a gun. Behind him, I said. Okay. Now, let's go. Hold it. All right, we'll go down these stairs. Stand with one. Get him, Max. Don't move, Lawrence. Or you get the same as Max. He's not moving, Peter. Sorry I had to wait so long, Chief, but I had to make sure you were out of my line of fire. Well, to be honest, I was getting a little jittery. Marion called, hmm? Just as we planned it. Planned? That's right, Lawrence. We let her get away. Hardy, Agent Braden just radioed us from the railroad station. They picked up the girl just as soon as she got a package out of a public locker. Everything we wanted in that package, Conway? Everything, sir. Their records and the stocks. Good. Well, Mr. Harding, that winds it up, hmm? To put it formally, Lawrence, you and the girl are charged with conspiracy and espionage against the government. And this is no phony. This is an official arrest by the United States counter spies. Tune in every Friday, same time, same station to Counter Spy. Listen next Friday for the exciting case of the insidious impersonation. When a certain chess player made a brilliant move, your counter spies were forced to checkmate him with the memory of an appendectomy. These and other facts will be told for the first time next Friday in Case of the Insidious Impersonation. Tonight's counter spy program originated in New York, was directed by Marx B. Loeb, dramatized by Edward J. Adamson and featured Don McLaughlin and Mandel Kramer. Counter Spy is produced by Phillips H. Lord. Three chimes mean good times on NBC.